This is a really exciting little computer. It's actually been <laughs> rolling by my YouTube feed just constantly over the past couple of weeks. It's actually been a while since we've been able to take a look at it for reasons. But uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 400. It is a fully self-contained computer and keyboard all in one. And this is the, the full personal computer kit. It comes with the mouse as well as a bunch of other goodies here. Around back, it'll say, yeah, meet Raspberry Pi 400. Your complete personal computer built into a compact keyboard. Remember when computers were built into keyboards? It's back in like the Commodore days, Amiga days. Featuring a quad core 64-bit processor, wireless networking, dual display output, and 4K video playback, this is the most powerful and easy to use Raspberry Pi computer yet. Surf the web, edit documents, watch videos, and learn to program using Raspberry Pi OS desktop environment. Yeah, like what else do you need a computer for? This is awesome. <laughs> I remember this is like the thing that everyone's like, oh, well the Raspberry Pi, like it, 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 one of these days it'll be a full computer and you'll be able to just get a full computer for like a hundred bucks. And that's exactly what this is. So this kit contains everything you need to get started with an asterisk. Raspberry Pi 400 computer, USB mouse, power supply, SD card, HDMI cable, and beginner's guide. And it does not include a TV or monitor, which is required to get started. Unfortunately, they can't put that in for a hundred dollars. Let's see. Yeah, the whole kit's a hundred dollars. I just looked. Yeah, it's like $70 for the computer on its own and for the whole kit, it's hundred bucks. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's so cool. It's running an ARM processor. Let's let's just be, be real about that, but it can run Windows for ARM and Windows for ARM is getting support for emulating 64-bit Windows programs. So we'll see how that works out in the future. So let's get into it, literally. Uh, there's no cute little message or anything on the inside. I mean, I don't know what I was, what I was expecting. It's a hundred bucks, $101. Actually, this isn't too bad. Keyboard front and center, which I mean, it's the computer. Oh, that's, that's really, really nice. It actually just like, it doesn't feel very heavy. It's kind of just like, oh, it's a wireless keyboard. Let's just dig in a little bit deeper here first before playing around with that too much. Okay, this is the USB type C power supply. 1 volt, uh, 5.1 volts, 3 amps. So yeah, if you had a quick charge charger, you could just forego this, but it's nice to have. A uh, raspberry themed SD card. Is that storage? That is the storage. And this is the Raspberry Pi mouse. Oh, oh, I broke the box. Jono, you really need to get me knives for when I can sit down here. No one gets knives. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is this going back to them? Oh, you mean it's coming back home with me? What? <laughs> uh, every short circuit you say you want to steal something. <laughs> it's not every short circuit. I'm sure if you went back through the short circuits, you'd find a short circuit or two where I didn't want to steal whatever it was I was reviewing. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? It's a little mouse. It's basically as basic as it gets. Uh, nothing special, but it's got a nice little short cable. Once I get this twist tie off. Oh, you know what? This is probably what the USB 2.0 port is for. Just dedicated for the mouse. Like that. So you don't have to use up your high speed storage, your, your high speed uh, connectivity. <clears throat> and you just get a wireless dongle. This mouse isn't great anyway, but it's included in the box for hundred bucks. Speaking of things included in the box, there is, <laughs> Uh, ooh, that is, uh, that is a thick boy starter guide. Like it is, it's not a starter guide. Uh, it says the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide, how to use your computer fully updated for Raspberry Pi 400 fourth edition by Gareth Half Halfacre. This book is written to show you just how easy it is to get started. <laughs> Learn how to. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's, it's actually pretty well uh, illustrated. There's like a whole lot of illustrations on here and screenshots and stuff. Uh, do you have a, uh, oh, there's, uh, I don't think there's screws. I don't know if I want to split this apart like that, do I? Yeah, this is a Pi 4. I don't know what the cooling solution looks like inside here. I'll have to take it apart later somehow. But uh, before we get into that, 
Gotta talk about Vessi. Thanks Vessi Footwear for sponsoring today's video. Vessi Footwear is known for being waterproof and also lightweight and comfortable. Their Diamantex material makes it breathable too. It'll keep you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Vessi offers everyday styling to fit most occasions and keep your feet dry for the wet future months. Save $25 off with offer code short circuit at vessi.com slash short circuit. All right, let's get into it. Uh, virtually at first. Uh, so uh, there's actually already a micro SD card in here. I guess I should probably look at the ports. Dual micro HDMI, USB type C for charging. Uh, I think you can also use a hub off of that. Uh, two USB three, USB 2.0 and gigabit network. Oh, and of course the GPIO. We'll get into those a little bit later. Oh, this is just an adapter. It said it came with the cable. Yeah, it says HDMI cable right here. Ah, I did miss it. <laughs> Stuffed right in here. Man, I don't like micro, micro HDMI. Let's get our mouse plugged in. Yeah, clearly that mouse port was designed for left-handed people. So it should actually, and thankfully did, have uh, Raspberry Pi OS set up and ready to go as it is. So, let's get started. Uh, we probably should, shouldn't we? That'll do it. Um, why does it say OBS virtual camera? Device is in use by other software. It's a lost cause. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to restart this again. If there's one thing that I will say about this is that if you're going to the effort of making an enclosure like this, why can't we have a power switch? Like, I, I don't see one on here. It doesn't have a power switch? No. So this is the default desktop. Right now we are not connected to wireless. Let's go ahead and, uh, Oh, right, because I couldn't do the uh, first time setup. It didn't actually let me check the country that I'm in. We are in Canada. Gotta tell it that for regulatory purposes. Uh, Vancouver. The uh, <laughs> user interface in uh, Raspberry Pi OS is a little bare bones. And of course it needs to reboot. That's another thing. Unlike most Linux distributions, Raspberry Pi OS requires a reboot a lot. Why isn't it connecting to Wi-Fi? Like this could just be our Wi-Fi being our Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit spotty today. Uh, oh, 2.4 gigahertz. Looks like it connected. Yeah, okay. I mean, not like we want to use 2.4 gigahertz. So let's just go to YouTube and uh, see what that's like. Let's take it a moment. Why does it have uBlock Origin in it? And H2, okay, H264FI is an extension that you'd probably want on a Raspberry Pi uh, because Linux doesn't support, or at least didn't, it does now, um, hardware accelerated video decoding for web browsers. This should have come out two years ago. Uh, that did not go to full screen gracefully. Yeah, that's, that's definitely doing some tearing and other random stuff that is not great. This, this shouldn't be pinning the CPU this hard. And now it's, it's back to normal again. It's like it needs time to fill up the buffer or something. <laughs> it takes a while to pause? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, actually, you know what? Uh, maybe, what version of Chromium is this? Version 78. Checking. Uh, that all looks pretty out of date. All right, we'll let that update, I guess. The version of Raspberry Pi OS that's on here right now uh, is pretty old. I will say this though, like as kind of bad as this desktop experience is, I would have killed for this as a kid. Can't imagine Windows for ARM would be very fast on this though. Listen, I'm not trashing the Pi. I'm just saying that there are certain things that it's better at than others. Uh, the Pi 4 is the first one that's truly been considered like desktop capable. And yeah, it is for some of the things you might want to do. Like if I was a kid doing homework, I could do it on that. Watching YouTube, unless I have this done, uh, kind of painful, but uh, there are other very, very exciting things that this can do. Let me quickly look up what it takes to take it apart. Get it open, I used a plexiglass cutter. Yeah, that's a pretty tight seam. I don't, I don't know about that. Well, here's this guy's vlog or blog. Thanks, Jeff. Now we get to see that Oh boy, I, uh, oh, yep, yep, that, there we go. 
now we get to see that on the inside, it's a long boy pie. That's that's what that's that's what it is. Now, it's a long boy pie. It's not strictly designed to be a desktop computer. It can be one mm -hmm. for a I'm gonna say like a kid or somebody who just wants to have something that they can break out and like hook some stuff up to and mess around with it. Mm -hmm. So I would say this is kind of for students or for, um, you know, tinkerers, that kind of thing. People who uh, would want a Raspberry Pi, but like want to have like a dedicated machine for tinkering. Yeah, I've just finished. Now this. 28, finish, yes. So that should have enabled hardware accelerated rendering. Yeah, it's still doing that. Less, oh. uh, you know, less of it. This is definitely an inception. But that was like one third of the time. Yeah, like it is a lot faster now. And there's more you can do with it. Like it's it's made for tinkerers, people who want to get their hands dirty with this kind of stuff. They don't like provide what I would consider to be sensible defaults. They just give you the system and say, hey, okay, here you go. That's kind of neat. There are other uh, options for um, operating systems as well. This is just Raspberry Pi OS, so your mileage may vary. Now, moving on to the GPIO pins. What are these for? It stands for General Purpose Input Output. Basically what these do is these give you a direct controllable set of pins that you can just plug stuff into. So let's say you've got a little breakout board or cable or something that you can plug in, I don't know, a SNES controller, Super Nintendo controller. Um, with the right circuit setup, you can plug that into the general purpose IO port and it'll just work. Same thing goes for, um, I think you can get webcams for it. So like, yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing that back in the day when I was in like high school and junior high school, I would have used a like computer with a breakout board that I plugged in with a serial connection. And I'd be like, okay, so in my Visual Basic program, I can press a button and the LED lights up. And that was the coolest thing ever, except I didn't actually have full access to that. I couldn't use it outside of the courses that were assigned to me as, a, as like a computer course. So like I couldn't tinker with it. I couldn't be like, oh, hey, this LED lights up when I do this. So if I were to do, I don't know, some other sequence of events, if I made it, make it so that when this program runs, this LED will blink. And if it crashes, then this LED will blink or something like that. Like it can just get much, much more complex. You can make it do basically whatever you want. There are people who make robots with Raspberry Pi GPIO. Here, this is a quick reaction game. It just basically has a few wires that plug into this breadboard and they plug into these GPIO pins. You have a button here, an LED here, and a button here. So I guess it's a two player game. One person has one button, the other person has the other. As soon as the light goes on, you press. And you can make that. It's really only limited by the number of pins you have. So like here we have a module that is essentially just an LED uh, array. So you can write out messages in it. A bunch of voltage lines, there's a bunch of just GPIO lines, and there's the EEPROM lines which are not necessarily all that useful for most people I would say. And that is awesome. That's something that has been possible to do since the Raspberry Pi 1. And now it's in a form factor that is, I would say, accessible to kids. And I would say that this is the perfect thing for a kid that has, you know, kind of imagination and a little bit of a tinkering spirit, you know? Uh, kind of the digital equivalent of like Meccano or something like that back in the day. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting flustered because there's so much stuff you can do with it and it's difficult for me to get across how cool that is that basically just has everything you need except for the screen. And you can just plug it into your TV and plug it into your monitor, plug it in wherever you can get a, the signal with HDMI and just start going with it. I don't know what else to say about it. You want us to check it out more in depth on LTT? Oh man, I would love to take a look at this in more depth than LTT. Maybe we can use it in a project or something. Maybe we can find something like, uh, I don't know, a desk PC or like, 
uh, some kind of switchable desk thing where we can use the keyboard to interact with or like OBS scenes or something. I don't know. Like there are so many different things you can do and it's just, mm. uh, yeah, let me know if you want to uh, see that in a LTT at some point in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. Uh, and I guess subscribe if you enjoyed my little stumbling through the Raspberry Pi 400. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one.